did you and your brother, because you both became musicians, did you manifest from a young age the fact that that's what you wanted to be? You, you could see yourself becoming a musician when you were older? <clears throat> that is a great question because it's, it's a very dense, not just regarding my brother and me, but regarding our generation. Mm -hmm. See, the, we became musicians because basically in the United States, and I'm I'm sure you know England had Beatlemania before it arrived in in the United States, and it had the same effect. Uh, culturally, business, fashion, consciousness, you know, and we became musicians because of that, and just everybody that I know from my generation became musicians because of that moment in time. That the Beatles perform on its all show. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now in the United States, we had a whole different different uh situation. <clears throat> Meaning that I don't know politically or culturally or socially what the situation was in England at the time that Beatlemania happened. But in the United States, it was the perfect storm. And I'll tell you why. Uh in November of 1963, John F. Kennedy, our president, was, was killed, right? Murdered. And that set the uh, the whole nation in mourning. We were doom and gloom. It was like, wow, this is November. So we had Thanksgiving coming up right then, you know. And so it was like, wow, this is, you know, the family's going to get together, but, you know, it's not going to be a celebration. It's going to be almost like a wake because our, our nation was in mourning, you know. And then after that, you have Christmas, a very gloomy Christmas. Then you got New Year's. What you got to look for? We just, you know, so by the time that February, the youth hits, we bounce back. We got the future ahead of us and, and, and things are are messed up, but we're we're gonna be part of the change. You know, let's let's look for a brighter future. I just turned 13 and the Beatles came on. That was it. That was the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Musically and and for for guys, us us males, we we wanted what the Beatles had. We had they had the adulation of the girls screaming at them. <laughs> if the camera would have never panned to the audience and seen the whole Ed Sullivan Theater filled with girls crying. We wanted that. We wanted that, that, oh my God, you know, because up until then, I was just 13. Um, I was uh, a recent, uh, we came to the United States from Cuba in 1961. And uh, as a political refugee, because of communism, yeah. we came between, I don't know if you know your, a whole lot about the history, but back then in the 60s, we had the Cold War, and it was between the Bay of Pigs and invasion. And and the the missile crisis. crisis That's yeah. when we arrived in night. Yeah, nineteen sixty one, uh, uh, September first, nineteen sixty one. And uh, so you know, I was just a total outcast when my family was relocated from Miami, which is the, our first our first destination was Miami. Then we were relocated to New Jersey, which is uh, West New York, right on the Hudson River, across. From New York City, so it was like a suburb of the city, you know. And uh, I got there in '63. This happened with Kennedy, and in school, the first this is the first time that I that I that I experienced groups like just like the neighborhoods. We had Italian, Irish, German, you know, all ethnic groups. Yeah. Different. A block would be just the Germans in that block. You know, and the Irish and the other block. I never experienced that when I was growing up in Havana. It was all mixed. Everybody lived together. We're all Cubans. It wasn't like, you know, Irish American or German American or whatever. You know, it was like we're Cubans. You know, in Cuba. So I was kind of like there were not too many Latins, Latinos in uh, Hispanics in in that neighborhood yet. It's things have changed. It's mostly Hispanic now in West New York, New Jersey, but but not, you know, my God, you know, what, 60 years ago. And uh, it wasn't until that, that night, the next of uh, the Beatles playing on Ed Sullivan's show, the next day, 
I went to school and including myself, all the kids, we got, we comb our hair forward. <laughs> yeah. You know, instead yeah, of having like the, uh, the Elvis look, you know, we went forward and that was it. So we looked at each other and it's like, you got it. Oh, you too. It's all you. You like the Beatles. Yeah. We're like, oh yeah. So, we, you know, we started talking and then I had a guitar and it was like, oh, you got a guitar. Oh man. Yeah. Bring it over to my place. You know? So now I'm hanging with like all these never, uh, all these different ethnicities yeah. that I did not have the opportunity to, or we, none of us did. Uh, to break up, break out of that, and and actually just make some mingle and and make music. Music brought us together, you know that moment in time. So it, it was definitely a, I think it was divine interve intervention that that particularly happened. And except for probably George Harrison, I really don't think that any of them understood the spiritual impact that the Beatles were having on the whole world and the history of mankind. And just, just to tie some of this together then, um, something that's happened recently, the Beatles, um, we're talking about um, things that never die, never go away. Obviously the John Lennon thing and and the, the demo mm -hmm. that the Beatles have taken and they've turned around and they've mm -hmm. released this new single mm -hmm. that all four have worked on because obviously George was involved in the 90s when they tried to bring it back and AI yes. and all this sort of stuff. I mean, what's your thoughts on, on firstly, the song itself? It, it, it's, it's just been released. It is the last Beatles track that the four of them will work on and, and the fact that they were able to do it with, with the help of technology and bringing all this stuff together. Uh, I mean, I I just listened into in the whole entirety yesterday. So I, I mean, you know, it, it was Lennon was such a great, masterful songwriter. He could go any way. Uh, he could write us something like, uh, let's say, "Real Love." There's a lot of musical uh, harmonic structures yeah. within that song. This new one seems to be a little bit more simple, more mm -hmm. diatonic. And it's not as complex with uh, with substitutions, you know, uh, using you know uh, modal substitution within the song that the Beatles were masters at doing that, you know, with their songwriting. This seems to be more straightforward, which which is nice. It's beautiful. It's it's a beautiful song, and uh, I don't know. I, I I think that we need more of the Beatles '60s. 60s British invasion consciousness in our lives because we we're getting see we're passing on the new generation hasn't had a a shift yet mm -hmm. like our yeah. generation experience you know kids in their 20s you know grunge <laughs> just, I mean, there has not been a real new musical movement since grunge, since since the '90s. So by the time they uh, they were born in the in the 2000s in the new millennium, it hasn't occurred yet, yet. You know that certain Beatlemania type shift that we had, where where with the music leading the way, not politics, not even religion. But music leading the way like it did. Uh, many activists have used through history music, yeah, as their yeah. vehicle to express themselves and to make change and to make change. Look at the blues. The blues was born in the cotton fields from slaves. It's the it's it's the foundation. Of our music, you have to you have to really know how to play the blues in order to move on to play other things as a rock musician, you know. And so I I, I look forward to it. <laughs> 